Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Nice little sip of some Java here to get the day rolling. Let's talk about something interesting that may seem insignificant, but to some degree it is significant. Stainless steel fasteners. Do you really need them? For virtually every build that we do in our Skunk Series engines, we include stainless steel fasteners. But we give every customer the option. I want to explain all the options to you guys, help you understand why these may or may not be right for you, and to answer the big question, do you really need to upgrade your fasteners on your engine? Stick around, and we'll answer that question. Let's talk about stainless steel fasteners. Here's the truth, guys. Well, let's primarily for now, let's focus on the external fasteners. Things like your primary cover, tappet covers, cam cover, rocker boxes, all that type of stuff. I would say, you know, your trap door for the transmission, that sort of thing. So let's focus on those for now. Uh, as again, I said on all of our Skunk Series engines, we mention these to people. And I would say probably 80 to 90% of the folks say, go with it. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of times I don't give a full, broad, technical perspective on these fasteners, but most often I'm asked the question, do you really need it? So here's the drum roll. No. <laughs> you don't have to upgrade to stainless steel fasteners. They're more of an aesthetic feature that doesn't really enhance the performance of the build. Let's cut through the crap and just be straight with you guys. It doesn't really enhance the performance. But let's dive into some technical aspects and the reason that for myself, personally, I would not build an engine for myself uh, without utilizing upgraded stainless fasteners. The truth of the matter is the stock fasteners uh, from the motor company are actually quite nice fasteners. Uh, they're, they're grade eight. In some applications, they're grade five, but for the most part, they're grade eight fasteners. And they're nice. They work. They do what they're supposed to do. But there's several aspects of upgrading that I like. First off, they're very attractive. Let's admit. 12-point, polished, and they stay this way. Typically, even in very, you know, salt-ridden environments, you know, on the coastlines and things like that, for the most part, this polished stainless steel will stay the way it looks when you pull it out of the box. The other thing I like about it is the 12-point aspect of it. I prefer the 12-point. Me, myself, I see absolutely no reason to upgrade to, say, a chrome or a stainless Allen head because that Allen head can still hold moisture, especially if the chrome, the water can sit in there and eventually rust that chrome fastener. And there's question on whether or not chrome actually weakens the bolt itself, but that's for another video. But for now, personally, I wouldn't upgrade to a stainless or a chrome Allen head. I would do the 12 point. One, water is not going to collect in that sucker. And the other thing is being a 12 point is you get a really nice purchase on that bolt with your socket, enabling, uh, basically, uh, I'm going to say virtually eliminating the possibility that the head of this would strip, strip out. I've never stripped out a 12 point fastener myself. I guess anything's possible if you let a gorilla torque your bolts down. But anyway, that being said, that's one reason. Now let's talk about a couple of other things. This actually rolls into gasket manufacturing and the technology built into gaskets. So let's talk, for example, let's start with, say, your primary cover gaskets, your tappet block gaskets, your, uh, you know, your cam cover gaskets. A lot of those gaskets, from Cometic at least, and also from the motor company, are manufactured out of a material called Fomet. And it's a foam type material that when you torque those things down and apply heat, there's a, a I, I, I don't know the exact technical term, but my guys at Cometic would. There's a, a material that's built into that that actually leaches out of that Fomet and ha actually aids in sealing that gasket. So that's one aspect that we need to think about is, uh, is gaskets and preventing oil leaks. That's one of the thing about, things about fasteners. 
Uh, so that's one aspect. Now let me jump around a little bit and explain fastener torque values. So typically you always see a range of torque values. Say, so let's pull one example on one particular application. Let's say on a cam cover, a cam cover bolt, that's quarter 20 fasteners with approximately an inch protrusion into aluminum. Using a factory fastener, they recommend, if I'm not mistaken, it's somewhere around 115 to around 127 inch pounds. Now, where a lot of those torque values come from is the lowest torque value is one that would prevent the gasket surfaces from leaking. The higher end of the spectrum is typically where you can begin to weaken, stress, or potentially strip the threads in the softer aluminum or softer fastener, depending on how you're putting it in there. But that's kind of like the maximum load. So when I torque a fastener down, I'm shooting for the middle for various different reasons. Number one, if I shoot for the middle, I know I'm not going to strip it. I know I'm not going, uh, that I should be, I sh knowing that I should be able to get a good seal and it, the gasket not leak. But the other reason I shoot for the middle is if I ever wanted to go back and check the torque of any of those fasteners, I could take my torque wrench and set it to the lowest setting. Go back and check those fasteners without running the risk that I would break the lock tight loose when I'm checking those torques. That is assuming that the person before me or the motor company torqued those fasteners to their proper range. Sometimes that doesn't happen. So we're going to bounce around a little bit here, guys. Again, bear with me. As a machinist and as many engines as I've built over the years, you would be astounded if you knew the number of times that I tear an engine down and threads come out with the bolts. The number of threads that we have to repair, the number of time certs we have to put in, and most of the time it's primary bolts and it's cam cover and cam plate bolts. Uh, one out of it, it uh, oh man. The number of them we have to do is just absolutely unbelievable. So one of the things that I try to do as an engine builder, building an engine proper, is I say that I want to leave no trace. And what I mean by that is I want to be able to install and remove fasteners and you as an owner later down the road, if you decide to change something or maybe you do develop a gasket leak somewhere or something like that, I want to know that when I install those fasteners, I'm giving you the ability to remove those fasteners without doing damage to the case, right? Now, when you look at some of the motor company's torque settings, they can be very high. And when you look at the machinist's handbook and you look at fastener types, materials that the fasteners are made out of, the material that that fastener is going into, the amount of protrusion, the pitch, the size, all of those things determine the maximum torque values for that particular fastener. And most often when I see these torque values, uh, motor company spec values, they're very, very high. The intent being that fastener is going to be put in once and never removed again. Well, sometimes they have to be removed again. So I largely, I don't want to say ignore, but I follow the machinist handbook and ASE standards when I choose what torque to use on particular types of fasteners. I don't pay attention to the motor company's values. I use engineering standards out of the machinist handbook, which any machinist, responsible machinist would do. That being said, there are other variables that come down to torque values. Now we got to remember on these, like this, talk specifically about quarter inch 20 fasteners, for example, going into the side of the case. We're, we're dealing with relatively small bolts protruding one inch into very soft aluminum with a grade eight fastener from the factory. That's a pretty big differential in hardness of material there. So whether or not you use Loctite, the amount of Loctite you use, the type of Loctite, how accurate is your torque wrench? How clean is the hole that it's being threaded into? Are the threads chased? All of these factors come into play with proper torque values, okay? Now, when we build an engine, we're chasing all the threads. We're clearing out all the old Loctite. 
we're using primers in each one of those bolts, you know, to get and brake clean and all that stuff to get all the debris, all the lubricants and anything else out of there that could affect the torque values. So that is a step that I feel is necessary. Now let's go back around the world to get across the street and let's talk about the stainless steel fasteners. One of the biggest reasons that I like stainless fasteners, other than the fact that they're quite attractive, is proper torque values. Okay, yes, you can take your factory bolts, you can clean them really well, you can use a bit of Loctite here and there, but when I use stainless fasteners, I don't use Loctite. That's technically a bit of an error, if you will. If you talk to the folks at ARP, which is where our fasteners come from, uh, if you talk to them, they're going to supply you with their fasteners a, a type of anesthes that is specially formulated for their fasteners and the use by which it, it will be utilized. There's several reasons you want to use their material, their anesthes compound, their thread lubricant, whatever they call it, instead of using Loctite. Number one, it provides a barrier between the dissimilar metals. Stainless into aluminum. You can have a bit of electrolysis, but if you use that ARP material, it mitigates that, right? So you run much less risk of stripping these threads over time, and that aids in that. That's actually, as a side note, a little tech tidbit, is one of the reasons for anesthes. Not just to lubricate, but also to mitigate electrolysis between two different types of dissimilar metals. That's the reason you have so many different types of anesthes. Copper based, there's brass based, there's aluminum based, et cetera, et cetera, graphite based. So you use what you should use. That's number one. Number two, that lubricant, that anti seize from ARP being specially formulated, provides me with an absolute known and proper torque value for that fastener in that material that will preserve that material allowing me to install and remove that fastener without doing any damage. Again, leaving no trace. It's one of the ideas. Now, we have had some customers, total transparency, that, uh, and to give you an idea, there's also a different torque value when you're utilizing stainless into aluminum with that thread compound, and if you buy ARP bolts, they're going to tell you what that recommended torque value is. Typically, it's around 110 inch-pounds. Now, what I have found over all my years of doing this, 110 inch-pounds of torque on a quarter 20 fastener, be it your derby inspection cover, your cam cover, your cam plate, all these different places, I have found it does no damage to the threads, they're easy to remove, and it seals the gaskets. Now, there's a couple exceptions. I said derby cover a second ago. I apologize. Let me rewind. For those covers that will be removed on a regular basis, Derby cover, inspection covers on soft tails and early touring models for the primary chain. Covers that are going to be removed frequently. Like even the, say like your air cleaners where you have to remove them to clean them. I typically go 100 inch pounds on those. But on your cam covers, your cam plates, things like that, I'm in that 110 to 120 inch pound range. And then I pay very close attention to ARP's recommendations for torque when I use their NIC's compound. Now, Back to what I was saying. We've had some customers that have uh, maybe developed a very slight leak under a cam cover, under a primary cover after their break-in miles and such, and they've utilized stainless fasteners. And we might get a phone call that, hey, man, you didn't put any Loctite on my bolt. Well, no, we didn't, because you shouldn't. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, the proper way is you use that anti-seize compound. After you go through that 500 mile, that 1,000 mile break in, yes, there is a possibility that, <clears throat> excuse me, that you may want to go back through and check the torque on all of those fasteners and get them down to about 110 inch pounds for several reasons. One, a little bit of stretch of the bolt, a little bit, tiny, tiny amount. The mating material being your case or your prime, inner primary cover, that sort of thing, but also collapse of the gasket those chemicals, which is why I mentioned this before, that are in that gasket that leach out when you torque it down to maintain that seal, all of those factors can affect that a little bit. Now, I want you to keep in mind, if we'd use Loctite on this fastener, one, it wouldn't be torqued to its proper torque. Two, if you go back to torque that down a little bit, you're gonna break the Loctite loose anyway, 
And really by us doing that, using that proper compound on there, it allows you to be certain and confident that you can go back in and check those torques, the torque values on those bolts as you work your way around and through. To new engine builders, to people new in the Harley world, that may seem like a nuisance, it may seem like a new thing, and it may seem absolutely unheard of. The reality of it is, for guys that have built old engines, Evo, shovel heads, working your way back, it's a common practice. You heat cycle an engine a few times. You go back and you check the torque values on all those covers. And sometimes, cylinder bases, heads, that sort of thing, you may find that you'll have to retorque on these old engines, retorque them two or three times. But in doing that process and adopting that process as your engine build procedure, you end up with old shovel heads and Evos and stuff that don't leak oil. It's an amazing thing when that works out that way, right? It's really not that amazing. It's just following a procedure, collapsing that gasket all the way and cinching everything down. If we used Loctite everywhere on all those fasteners, we would not be able to do that. And we would produce leakers everywhere and they would start leaking, particularly cylinder bases and things like that. So anyway, let's answer the big question. Stainless steel fasteners, do you need them? No, you don't absolutely have to have them. So then the next question is, why do we install them for customers? Reality is, it improves the serviceability of your motorcycle over time. It allows you to remove this fastener safely without running as much risk of damaging threads as you remove it. Number two, it ensures proper torque on that particular surface. Number three, again, they're very attractive. Uh, the chances of stripping out these 12-point stainless fasteners are slim to none, unless you hire a gorilla to tighten them, and that's another thing. Um, but it also allows you to go back and retorque these fasteners, ensuring that your covers are there. It prevents warping of a lot of those covers. There's so many different little details and factors that, that go into that, which is the reason that I personally would not build an engine without upgrading, without upgrading my fasteners in some degree or another. So in short, when you call us to build an engine for you, fasteners is one of the things that we're going to talk about. And this is something that you have to consider. You know, it's uh, if you're <clears throat> looking at, say, a twin cam or M8, the prices are roughly the same. If you're doing transmission, primary, all the engine fasteners, you know, the scale, the drivetrain fasteners, this is about a $600 investment. So it's not cheap. But at the same time, if you only want to do it once, it's something to really think about. Thanks a million for watching. I would love to hear your comments. And uh, any constructive criticism you guys have, as you know, I try to maintain transparency in everything in all of our videos. We cut through the marketing bull crap and let you guys, give you guys, arm you guys with all the information we can so that you can make the best decision possible for your build. For all you customers that are on our backlog, thanks so much for hanging in there with us. We're getting ready to start bringing in another batch of bikes for tear, tear down and in the machine shop and stuff. Once I get my airlines here in the next few days, I can crank this valve seat machine back up, that boring bar back up. For the guys that have bikes in here, I've already talked to you already. And uh, we're getting ready to start the machining processes for you guys. And we're just rocking and rolling and stoked, stoked, stoked about that. So, uh, take care of yourselves and each other and uh, be on the lookout. We're going to be starting a fundraiser very soon for an all-kids bike program for the local county here. And I'm, I'm really excited for that. We're going to do some new design t-shirts and all that stuff. And uh, see if you guys can help us out. Did I already say it? Take care of yourselves and each other. I don't know. I'm so excited to be back at work wearing an apron and actually running a mill that I don't even remember what I said. Huh. Anyway, take care of yourselves and each other. You guys have a good one.